In this lecture, we're going to look more at conservative vector fields. In particular, we have a nice theorem here, which is going to feel a lot like the fundamental theorem of calculus. This is the fundamental theorem for line integrals. It says, if f is a conservative vector field, and r of t, for t values going from a to b, parametrizes some smooth simple curve c, then if I want to compute the vector line integral of f along c, I can rewrite that as the vector line integral of the gradient of a potential function little f along c. So here I'm using the fact that since f is a conservative vector field, there's a family of potential functions whose gradients produce f. Okay, so far what I've written down is not a theorem, this is just substitution. So what is the theorem? The theorem is that if I want to now compute this line integral, it amounts to computing the value of the potential function at the end point minus the potential function evaluated at the beginning point of the curve. That's the theorem. If it helps, you can think of this as little f of r evaluated at b subtract off evaluating at a. This should remind you of the fundamental theorem of calculus because it's saying if we want to do this integral of something which feels like a derivative, in this case what we mean is it's the gradient of a scalar valued function, then all I have to do is just plug the endpoints into that scalar valued function. So it reminds me a lot of the fundamental theorem of calculus. Let's do the proof, it's a neat little computation. So we want to compute the vector line integral of capital F dot dr. Now let's take our vector field capital F and just replace it with the gradient of little f as I did in the line above. This is still in the general form for vector line integrals, but now let's do the computational form that we've seen in exercises. So this would be the integral from a to b of the gradient of f evaluated along the parametrization r of t dot the velocity vector dt. I claim this integrand can be rewritten in a really convenient way. Notice it's gradient of f evaluated on r dot r prime. This is something that you've seen before. So you've seen this exact dot product in a previous unit. In fact, we saw this when we talked about the chain rule. We said if you're evaluating a scalar valued function along a parametric curve, so you're doing the composition f of r, and you want to take the derivative of that composition, it's derivative of the outside evaluated on the inside times the derivative on the inside, at least that's how we often state the chain rule, at least in single variable calculus. In that context, we wrote it as the gradient of f evaluated on r of t dot r prime of t dot the velocity vector. So here we're going to undo that chain rule. But this is now just a single integral. There's no vectors left here really, we're just doing the integral of the derivative of a scalar valued function of one variable. So by the regular fundamental theorem of calculus, we can evaluate this. We're just integrating a derivative. That's just going to be f of r of t evaluated at b, subtract off evaluating at a. Okay, so that concludes the proof. This is a really great theorem. Just like the fundamental theorem of calculus allowed us to stop doing Riemann sums with rectangles and start just using antiderivatives, if we know we're doing a line integral of a conservative vector field and we have a potential function for it, we can skip the whole process of parametrizing, plugging in, computing velocity vector, doing the integration. We can skip all that. All we have to do is just evaluate our potential function at two points. So this will simplify our lives. In particular, the fundamental theorem of line integration tells us that the line integrals of conservative vector fields are what we call independent of path. So in this slide, imagine that I have some background conservative vector field capital F. And now imagine I take two points in this domain, P and Q. If I want to compute the line integral of this vector field along this path from p to q, that could be a nightmare to try to parametrize, but it would be the exact same line integral if I just took a straight line from p to q. Because for both line integrals, 
all I'm going to do is evaluate the potential function on Q and subtract off evaluating the potential function on P. The path between them doesn't matter. So the line integral of f along these two paths would have the same value, and they would also have the same value as, say, this one. So in this third curve I just drew, this is piecewise smooth. So if you wanted to evaluate the line integral of f along this curve, you would need to set up a bunch of integrals. Let's do an example of using the fundamental theorem of line integration. So suppose I have this vector field, capital F of x, y, and z is 2x, 2, 1. And I want to compute the vector line integral of this vector field along the helix r of t equals cosine pi t, 4t, 3 sine pi t, for t values going from 0 to 4. I could compute the curl of this vector field to show that it's conservative. It's not too hard to see that it would be the gradient of the function little f of x, y, and z is x squared plus 2y plus z. So if you compute the gradient of that function, you get 2x, 2, and 1. So to compute this vector line integral, I can just evaluate this potential function where we begin and where we end. So let's figure out the starting point and ending point for this helix. So we started at r of 0, which was cosine of 0 is 1, 1, 0, 0. And then we ended when t was 4. That would be cosine 4 pi, which is also 1, 16, 0. Okay, so the vector line integral of f along this helix, we can now compute using the fundamental theorem for line integrals. It's going to be the potential function little f evaluated at q minus the potential function evaluated at p. In other words, it's f of 1, 16, 0 minus f of 1, 0, 0, which will be 1 plus 32 minus just 1. So the answer is 32. Here's a corollary or a follow-up result to the fundamental theorem for line integration. You might have already spotted this. And that is, if we want to do the circulation of a conservative vector field, then it must be 0. And that's because if we're doing a circulation integral, r of b and r of a are the same point. So when we do f of r of b minus f of r of a, we're just going to get 0. So around any simple closed curve, the circulation of a conservative vector field is zero. Don't have to parametrize, don't have to do anything, it's automatically zero. Okay, suppose I want to compute the circulation of this conservative vector field, capital F, which is a vector field in R3, around the curve that I just sketched for you. Since it's a conservative vector field, and we have a piecewise smooth simple curve C, the circulation is zero. I want to finish today with kind of a nuance. And that is that we haven't talked too much about vector fields which are not defined on the entire space, all of our two or all of our three. So consider this vector field f of x and y equals negative y divided by x squared plus y squared, x divided by x squared plus y squared. We've seen this before. It seems like this is a conservative vector field because if you take the scalar valued function of two variables, little f of x and y equals the arctan of y over x and compute its partial derivatives, they're going to take this form. And moreover, if you do that 2D scalar curl test where you compute dq dx, the derivative of the second component with respect to x, and subtract off dp dy, the derivative of the first component with respect to y, you'll get zero. However, this is an example of when the test does not work. This vector field is not conservative in any domain that encloses the origin where it's not defined. In a previous example, we showed that the circulation of this vector field along the unit circle had a non-zero circulation. The circulation was 2 pi. That's not a contradiction because this closed loop 
does not live inside of a domain on which this vector field can actually be called conservative because this closed loop encloses this point where the vector field is not defined. If I take a domain, however, which does not enclose the origin, so we could say this domain has no holes for this vector field. If I compute the circulation of F around any closed curve in this domain, it will be zero because on this kind of domain that has no holes, then our test works. So on this kind of domain, this vector field would be conservative. I just want to mention that our test that we saw for conservative vector field is a good one. So long as the domain you're working in for the vector field does not contain any holes. So if you're looking at a vector field that's defined on all of R2 or all of R3, then the test we have will detect if it's a conservative vector field. And then you can apply the fundamental theorem for line integrals.